Hey guys, it's Dr. Nikosi Darnell, AKA Techie SLP. And I wanted to share with you a fun and engaging way to help your students learn their vocabulary using Pear Deck. Now Pear Deck is a great all-in-one space to where you can store your information to share with your students. And a lot of times I like to use it with my Google Slides. This pairs very well with Google Slides to where it will naturally import your presentations that you're sharing with your students, as well as you can manually do it. Now you can see like I have some here, you know, showing up, you really can't see them right now because it's taking a second to load, but it's different topics that I like to work on with my students, such as being internet savvy and things like that. And then they also have some other resources that you can look into and incorporate into your sessions, as well as ongoing webinar trainings to help you better integrate technology online and be like developmentally appropriate with your practices. But let's go back and we're going to talk about creating our own vocabulary list. So whenever you click on that little button that I just clicked on the right side of the screen, it'll generate this list that you can create for your students of vocabulary words. Now, if you've already created one in the past, you can easily import them by clicking on this icon at the top right corner. But for our demonstration, we are going to create our own. And I'm just like putting in very simple words, guys. So like happy is one, right? And so underneath we've got our definition options. And um, this is in the teacher's per, um, view, right? Or perspective. So that's what we're looking at. And I'm just going to click on this third one. And then I'm going to click on sad, right? You could even do like antonyms and synonyms and all sorts of things in here. So I clicked on sad and it generated like a couple of different options. So I'm going to choose that. And if you need to familiarize yourself a little bit more with how flashcard factory works, you can click on this button below. But since, you know, we know what we're doing, we're just going to go ahead and click on play flashcard factory. So it's going to take us to a new screen. And as you'll see, this is your perspective. You can screen share it if you want um, to where it's on a projector. I've also done it off of my iPad. Um, and what happens is you send your students this information. So they join you online by clicking on joinpd.com. And then they're going to um, put in this code, right? And then it gives you like this little exothermic muffins vacate purple quiz. It's like a silly little phrase, right? So we're going to save that. I want to show you a little bit more of the teacher's view before we move on. We're going to clock in when we're ready. And you can see we can group students or clients into two different sections. A lot of times it's just like myself and the student playing, right? And so then it'll just show like, um, for me, it'll typically say techie SLP because that's what I'm logged in as, right? So we do that and then we can go in and click on let's play. And so this is the teacher's view. You can see there are two different sections for the two different teams, for instance. We've got happy and sad on both. And as soon as the students begin to generate their responses, you're going to see them show up here. So we'll come back to the teacher's view in a moment, but let's swing over to the student's view. Now in the student's view, this is the page that they will come to, the landing page. And you can see they can just click on join a session they don't have to log in or anything. Okay, so that's the great part about it. And a lot of times I just have their parents um, online anyway. So it's very easily accessible. We're going to put in our code um, that was given by the teacher. And then here's a letter from the foreman that's from us. So we can like work in groups, for instance, or individually. So you can see the word that we put in was happy, right? So you can work with your group to draw an example of happy. They can do it by themselves. They can work on it with a sibling, for instance, or a parent and so on. So what they're going to do is draw in here what happy looks like to them. Now I'm doing this on my web-based platform, you guys, but you can also do this on the iPad, which is really nice because, you know, for students or children who are a little bit younger, 
they can just use their fingers and it's more hands-on and it's a little easier than using a cursor, for instance. And once they're happy with that drawing, they just click on, you know, that they're completed, that they've completed it. And then they go in and they have to actually give a writing example of what happy means. So, or, you know, just using it in a sentence. So they could say, I am happy when I eat ice cream, right? So that could be an example. And then, so if they're happy with their drawing, then they can like just check it off and say, it looks good, let's ship it, okay? Now let's go to sad, right? So we're gonna draw a quick photo of someone who's sad, right? And they've got like, you know, tears. They're just crying a lot, right? Or whatnot. They are very, very sad. All right. And then we can just flip it over, draw the rest of their body, and then keep it rolling. So once they're done drawing, they go back here and they can put in like, I'm sad when I get to go, say, horseback riding, right? Let's say if they didn't um, do it correctly or whatnot. Like say if they kind of gave a bad example, um, but they were happy with it, right? So then they finish it all, okay? So then they have to wait for us to move on. So now we're gonna flip back over to our teacher's view. Now in the teacher's view, you'll see like the little boxes as they come through and going on this conveyor belt. And then you click on quality control to see their work. So here you can see for happy what they did and you can give them a check mark if they did well, you know, and got it spot on. And for sad, like say if the drawing was fabulous, but maybe the picture was not so great, you can like give them an X. And then, you know, they get one out of two terms correctly that can go to the final set, right? It's almost like a little competition. So whoever has like the best um, exemplars of um, specific words, for instance, and um, with drawings gets to go to the final um, game set. So then you actually, if you want, you don't have to do this, but you can export it to what we call GimKit. And so GimKit is just like a live playing um, platform that students can play on with um, different vocabulary words, right? So we can export it without naming it. And then once um, we do that, we can actually go to that specific set. And once we finish exporting it, it will show up on this GimKit site, which is FERPA protected and compliant with it. So it's great about protecting privacy. Um, and so you'll see it and they can actually play um, like this vocabulary game with all of these students or you know, specifically within their classroom. And so it's just a great way to make learning very interactive and move our students or clients from being just passive consumers using technology to active producers of knowledge as they're integrating technology into their daily routines and not just you know vegging out on it. Okay, I hope you've enjoyed and I look forward to seeing you guys next time.